The Alienware AW3423DW is a gorgeous 34-inch ultra-wide monitor, but has a few quirks you should be aware of. Depending on your use case, this may be one of the best gaming displays out there. Coming in at 22.86 pounds with the stand and 15.26 pounds without the stand, it was too heavy to use on my existing monitor arm, so keep that weight in mind if you want to use this with a monitor arm. A 100 by 100 millimeter VESA mounting plate is included with the monitor. The AW3423DW, henceforth called the Alienware monitor, is the first OLED monitor using Samsung's QD OLED technology. And while the early adopter tax isn't cheap, the monitor retails for $1,300 from Dell's website, there are more expensive high-end monitors out there. Compared to my previous monitor, the Dell 2716DG, which is a TN panel, this is a night and day difference and has really opened my eyes to the world of amazing contrast with inky blacks, eye-popping colors, and has been home to my first foray into HDR gaming. While expensive, the Alienware monitor was cheaper than the monitor that had originally kicked off my dream of experiencing HDR gaming, which was the Asus ROG Swift PG27UQ, which had an MSRP of $2,000 when it came out back in 2018. With a black and white color scheme, this monitor oozes a slick and futuristic vibe. The stand is robust and allows tilt, swivel, height, and slant adjustments to get it just right on your desk. The monitor has a plate on the back to cover up cable routing, and the stand has an opening to route the cables behind for a cleaner look. Turning to the back of the display, there's an Alien logo that's RGB, as well as an RGB accent lighting at the center where the stand connects to the display. Colors can be adjusted with the monitor's on-screen display settings, as well as the Alienware Command Center app. This monitor is also actively cooled and you may or may not be able to hear the fan. I've noticed it once or twice, but this isn't loud enough to overcome the white noise around me from the AC, the fans in my tower, or the room fan, and I really only think about it when I remember that the monitor has active cooling. Your situation may vary depending on your setup, but for me, this hasn't been an issue. Looking from the bottom up, we find one of the first downsides to this monitor, the port selection, with a single DisplayPort 1.4 port and two HDMI 2.0 ports. This is a monitor primarily made for PC gaming in mind using DisplayPort. So if you want to use it primarily for console gaming, you may want to look at other options. I don't have a PS5 or Xbox Series X to test with, but you can find content from other reviewers that further elaborate on the downsides for this monitor for console gaming. Next to the DisplayPort is a line out port. On the opposite side, there's a service port, security lock, and finally the power. One nice thing about the port selection is that there is a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-B port to connect to your computer to drive the four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports. Two USB ports are next to the HDMI ports, and the other two are conveniently located along the bottom of the display to the left of the Alienware logo that's on the front of the bezel. If you're using wireless keyboard and mouse, the USB dongles plugged into these ports have a more direct path to your peripherals but come at the cost of the dongles protruding out from the bottom of the monitor. I personally find it convenient when it comes to using a USB dongle, but with my current desk layout, I don't have enough room to plug in a flash drive because I have a soundbar sitting just below the panel and my flash drives are too long. Finally, there is a headphone jack between the two USB ports. In the center, there is an OSD joystick that you can use to navigate the monitor settings and menus, as well as another customizable RGB LED. On the right side is the power button, which is illuminated by an RGB light that you can also customize. On the front of the monitor, there's a large black chin with white Alienware text printed on it. The bezels on the other sides of the panel are thinner, but we'll get into that later. Let's take a look at the quality of the panel next. My unit arrived with no noticeable dead or stuck pixels, but obviously your mileage may vary. There's an 1800R curve on the panel, which adds to the experience while playing games that properly support this resolution. The monitor comes pre-calibrated from the factory and includes a printout showing the color calibration. I don't have a calibration tool on me, so I'm unable to test the color accuracy, but this is far and away the best quality panel I own. Screen uniformity is also very good. I noticed that there was only a minimal change in color when I viewed the monitor from off angles. With the 1800R curve, it's really meant to be placed in front of your eyeballs anyway. As far as colors and image quality, the only comparable screen I have in my arsenal is my iPhone's OLED display. No other monitor I own touches the colors and quality of this Alienware panel. This is far and away the best screen I've ever used. That said, this is where the next quirk of the monitor comes into play, the sub-pixel arrangement. 
Again, you can see other reviews that will go into this more in depth, but the main takeaway is that the RGB subpixel structure is different on this panel compared to other panels. The result of this can be noticed with color fringing, for example, color fringing on text. I don't think this is a deal breaker for this panel for me, but it is something to be aware of if you intend to use this monitor for productivity. Speaking of quirks, the next quirk about this panel is the display port can't fully display the color depth at 175Hz. The max refresh rate of 175Hz is using 8-bit color, and if you use 10-bit color, you need to drop it to 144Hz. I can't say that I've been disappointed by the colors I've seen on this monitor, but if that is a deal breaker for you, there's that. I recall this being a sticking point on the Asus PG27UQ, so it's absurd to me that on a high-end panel like this, this is still the case 4 years later. I've heard that this is something to do with the G-Sync module. At a resolution of 3440 by 1440, it's only 1 1.2 million pixels more than a 16x9 2560 by 1440 panel. For me, 2560 by 1440 has been an ideal resolution for years at the 27 inch screen size, and this ultra wide resolution doesn't bug my system down much more compared to if I was running it at 4K. Maybe it's because the monitor sub pixel layout or the more glossy surface, but I seem to notice the pixels more on this monitor compared to my previous Dell LCD gaming monitor. But it's not something that I noticed while playing a game. Speaking of games, I played through the story of God of War 2018 on this monitor. Having already played it on PS4 back in 2018, the way the colors pop on this monitor and then the extra flare of HDR made it feel like it was the first time I was playing it. I was constantly stopping through the journey to spread phase ashes in the highest peak in all the realms, to just gawk at the sights. I spent minutes staring at the deep red jewel on the bridge along with the gold surrounding it, as well as in the room of the realms. This panel makes me want to re-download my games from my library and see what they look like on this monitor now. For example, I was always impressed with how Arkham Knight looked, but on this monitor, even without HDR, the boost in contrast makes me want to play through it yet again, and I'd only just finished a playthrough of the whole Arkham series a couple months ago. You would already expect an amazing contrast ratio being an OLED panel, and I was floored when I set this monitor up and powered it on for the first time. For example, when using a black desktop background, if it wasn't for the Windows 11 taskbar leaving a thin line at the bottom of the screen, when hidden, which speaking of which, Microsoft, why won't you let me make the taskbar black? I would have had no idea that this monitor is even powered on save for the RGB lights on the monitor glowing. My desktop setup is I have this panel in the center and then it's flanked by two IPS panels. So while displaying a black screen, I'm quickly reminded of the stark difference between having backlight bleed and not having blacklight bleed. Flip on HDR, load up a video, and it's like I'm standing at the local Best Buy gawking at the huge TVs. And now I have that same technology as a gaming panel. There are two HDR levels, True Black HDR 400 and HDR 1000. While I don't have any panels with a weak implementation of HDR and brightness levels to do a proper side-by-side -side HDR 400 comparison, I can say that I was impressed using both HDR 400 and HDR 1000. God of War 2018 looked amazing when I played it on my PS4, plugged in and running on my old Dell monitor, even if it was being scaled up. But I'm actually mesmerized by how much of an upgrade this panel was. While I don't have the equipment to set up tests for things like ghosting, response time, latency, etc., check out what others are saying about this panel for more in-depth tests. With my own eyeballs, however, this monitor is crisp and is a night and day difference with blur and ghosting compared to my other panels. While the flanking IPS panels are not gaming panels, I switched the alien blur test to one of them and saw the trail behind the alien and then switched it back to the alienware monitor and saw no such trail. I've mainly been playing more cinematic games and not as much competitive games. I hope to test more FPS games in the future. Another quirk of this panel is the semi-gloss coating. The image quality looks amazing on this panel, but it comes at the cost of reflections and glare. In certain lighting conditions, the panel may even look gray. From looking this up, it looks like this is due to a lack of a polarization layer. So you may have to adjust the position of your lights and your setup or play in a darker room. One downside for me with my setup is that I have a smart light that sits on my dresser that I use as a wind down light at night and a wake up light in the morning. I can see the reflection of it and I need to turn it off whenever I'm using this monitor. And then when you can see a reflection, the curved panel makes everything look wide and distorted which really messes with my eyes. Using this panel with Windows 11 shows yet another quirk of this panel. I don't know if it's just me or what, but when one of my monitors gets picked up by Windows 11, all the connected monitors flicker on and off several times before Windows finally figures itself out and then it's all good. That wouldn't be so bad, but this monitor takes a moment to display an image when you turn it on. But a very important point that I had to figure out, be sure to not use the auto selection option in the source input menu. For me, my soundbar has an HDMI pass through, so I think that might have been the culprit messing with this monitor whenever it would disconnect, it would try to switch to HDMI. 
However, I still have technical issues because I switch one of my monitors over to a laptop to do work. This seems to alter the way in which Windows identifies the monitors and the numbers get switched up. So if this monitor was monitor number one, and then I switch my side monitor to the work laptop, when I switch it back, I notice that the monitors get relabeled. So at the end of the day, when I want to load up a game, I find that it'll open on one of the flanking monitors instead of my primary Alienware panel. And then I have to go to Windows settings and tweak my primary monitor, change it back, and then hopefully cross my fingers it'll work. Luckily, God of War was very forgiving on this because you can actually switch what monitor it's outputting to in the settings. But in other games, it's really a guessing game of which monitor it's gonna open up on because of this issue, and it's really annoying. This really needs to get fixed. I like to see Windows get better support for this panel and OLED monitors in general. Why can't I make the taskbar black to hide that line? It would also be good if they can implement improvements to text because of the subpixel layout. I also really wish Windows 11 didn't flicker so much when it connects to a display. Another annoying thing in general is that you can't take full advantage of this monitor when using streaming apps. Even if it looks like the screen is being filled streaming a movie with an app like Disney+, Plus, I'm not getting the quality I should be getting. Speaking of OLED monitors when it comes to burn-in, this panel has several burn-in mitigation features as well as a three-year warranty. In fact, there are several built-in features. One I've noticed the most, partly because of the issues with Windows, is that when the monitor has been on for a period of time, it'll go into a refresh mode where it will flash the power button green and the monitor will be unusable for a while. Coupled with the issues with Windows, sometimes this happens when I'm trying to play a game or when Windows power settings turn off the display when I'm away from my computer. This pixel refresh takes about seven minutes to complete. I usually let it happen when I'm gonna be away for a while or if I'm going to bed at night. Luckily, this can be postponed by pushing the power button again when it's happening, and then it will run it later, like when I go to bed, for example, and I'm okay with that. But it is annoying how hiccups with the connection to the computer will trigger the pixel refresh, even when I'm not intending to do that. Another feature it has that if you look around the edges of the display, there's actually some black pixels there. The reason for this is that this panel will constantly shift the image around the display a little bit. This is noticeable every now and then. It's not a big deal for me, but it is something that you can see happen sometimes, so just be aware of it. You can also do a manual OLED panel maintenance refresh in the settings if you want. For me, I take extra precautions by using a black background on the panel, hiding the taskbar, updating the power plan settings so that Windows turns off the display when idle for a short period of time, and then powering the panel off if I intend to be away for more than a little while. That said, I've only had this monitor for a month, so I can't really speak to issues with burn-in at this point. One final quirk will be the 1800R curve on the panel. Some might like it and some might not. For gaming, I find it to be really immersive and really ties the experience together. However, when it comes to productivity, it's more of a mixed bag. On one hand, the curve helps not to have the sides of the monitor further away from my eyes, but I do tend to notice the curve, especially using a flat monitor for a while and then coming back to this. It's a little disorienting to my eyes. Another concern I have about the curve is when it comes to doing graphics and editing. Having a much wider horizontal space for a timeline in video editing is nice, but I'm concerned about trying to do graphical work and the viewing and drawing of straight lines on a curved panel. At this point, the jury is still out for me because I've only done some video work and not much graphical work yet. So far, I've played some games like Age of Empires 2, Doom Eternal, God of War, among others, and have used it for browsing the news, watching videos, and doing some light video editing. Your mileage may vary, and I picked up this monitor expecting that I need to take some precautions, but I'm interested to see how it goes as this monitor ages. For now, this is the best panel I've ever used. In conclusion, if you're willing to take some precautions to preserve the QD OLED panel, this is a beautiful gaming display. It's really opened my eyes to the whole new world of PC gaming with improved colors and HDR, and I highly recommend it if that's what you're looking for. But again, just be aware of the quirks. If you have a technology question, check out techmindset.io and book a consultation with me. I'll also include a link to Dell's website so you can check out the display for yourself. That's all for this one, and I'll catch you in the next one.